Samira Musa. Is the recent US plane crash in Libya a sign that Western forces intervening there will only create another catastrophe that was Iraq? Okay, and I should say as well, so we're completely live here on BBC3 tonight, and here's the very latest line on Libya. Uh, the Libyan Air Force no longer exists as a fighting force. That is according to the commander of British aircraft operating over Libya. The Libyan Air Force no longer exists as a fighting force. Let's go to uh, uh, George Galloway, first of all. Well, these kind of hubistic uh, boastings are uh, almost uh, guaranteed to uh, backfire. Um, if uh, another American plane comes down, uh, we'll know that that's not quite as true as the military spokesman today said. Even worse, after the American plane came down and the villagers near Benghazi who came out to rescue the American pilots, six of them were shot and once had his arm amputated by the American commandos uh, who didn't understand their uh, intentions which just goes to show the law of unintended consequences. No military plan survives first contact with the enemy, and this one won't either. It's going nowhere. It's costing us three million pounds a day on the day that the Tory Chancellor laid waste to hundreds of thousands of British jobs, butchered more British public services. It turns out we've got three million a day to spend throwing Tomahawk cruise missiles a million dollars a time a North African country and Richard said it's the first time we've been in military action since Iraq that long huh but actually we've been in military action every day since Iraq it's called Afghanistan we're already in an uproar Uh, a, a new uh, theatre of war. But you mentioned the six people that were shot. It is worth saying that the father of the boy who may have to have his leg amputated has said that he, f he has forgiven the Americans because... <laughs> Better him than me. I wouldn't forgive them if they shot my son's leg off, would you? No, but it's, it's an important point. He it's wants them there. Well, he thinks they're doing an important job. He thinks well, it's necessary. He's probably not got much of a choice uh, over that. But his son's leg was shot off. Six other people were shot. I'm just making the point that when you're throwing high explosives around the place, don't pretend that there's anything forensic about it, that there's anything targeted about it. I've been in enough medical wards where the victims of surgical precision bombing have been taken, perchance to die, to know that all this propagandistic guff about military weaponry is just okay. one of the big lies so of this century. George, we shouldn't be there at all. Not at all. We are the colonial power that used to govern in these places. Well, we are the last people in the world who should be invading and, uh, uh, and bombing other people. It's an enormous international coalition. Just How audience, enormous is it? Well, uh, well, Name well, names. Well, well, let me address that in a moment. An audience and eighteen to come in and we will. Absolutely clear. You would have left the people of Benghazi to their fate. The tanks were on the outskirts of Benghazi. Gaddafi had said he would go house to house, door to door, and show these people no mercy, and you would have left them to die. Don't give me that. The same don't people, give you that. The same people that? that are bombing for human rights in Libya are killing people in Pakistan yes. and Afghanistan on a daily basis. And you've just, you've just brought into your vast coalition, Saudi Arabia, the Saudi Arabian Air Force, bombing for human rights when it's killing its own demonstrators and has just invaded Bahrain to kill theirs. So the answer is your hypocrisy. It's not. It's absolutely It's a perfectly valid point. It's absolute so Well, the answer is... You, some you know, people can be killed, other people have to be saved. I wonder what the difference is. So, it's got three letters. It begins with O, it ends in L, and the middle letter is I. So, therefore, the answer is yes, you would have left the people of Benghazi to their fate. I wouldn't have armed Gaddafi in the first place. When I was saying, when I was telling you, when I was telling the BBC that Gaddafi was the same criminal today as he was last year and ten years before, the BBC was singing off the same hymn sheet as Tony Blair and the Labour government this ministers. This is a different point. It's this not a, a different, different point. point. He wouldn't have his tanks if we hadn't sold them to him.
He wouldn't have the training but given, of the special forces but given that if we that hadn't happened, trained them. Given that that happened, you have to accept that happened, and there we had an urgent situation where yeah. the tanks were on the outskirts yeah. of the yeah. town. Yeah. You'd have left them to 1,600 Palestinians were killed to death from the sky by Israel. And you never asked for a no-fly zone once. And you never will ask for a no-fly zone once. Hello there, good evening. Yeah, um, I understand uh, George's points about the disparity in terms of um, foreign policy with uh, uh, Mugabe, Israel, Saudi Arabia, but I'd like him to actually answer the question, and mm. what would you do? Mm. What, what, what should be done? Mm. Should, they, should no forces have gone in, or should forces have gone in from another country or some other country? But what well, would you have done? Answer Arabs, the question. Arabs have a right to be there. Egypt has a right to be we there. We asked them to be there. Has to be there. We asked I, I, them. I called on them. Uh, uh, to open their borders right at the start of this revolution. I'm a supporter of the Libyan revolution before David Cameron supported it. The difference is, I'm a supporter of all the Arab revolutions. He definitely isn't. <laughs> Libya's oil is less than 2% of the world's uh, oil supply. Uh, she obviously doesn't know the price of oil. <laughs> she can... What? Only 2%. Have you any idea what the value of 2% of the world's say, oil is? And it's not true to say that we would only send forces to help places that have oil because you just need to look at somewhere like Richard. Sierra Leone yeah, where we made a huge difference. Before we get, George, quick point yeah. the audience. Before we get starry eyed about the Security Council, the most populous countries in the world did not vote for this re resolution. And they didn't vote against it either. India, China, Russia, they gave Germany, it tacit Turkey, approval. They didn't vote against it. it. They gave it tacit Listen, approval. Germany, Turkey, China, Russia, are, uh, and India are all against this. They, 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 against it. they have all been they denouncing it in the days that well, followed. No, because that's not they true. did not believe that they were abstaining on something that involved the hurling of hundreds, hundreds of cruise missiles at a million dollars a time I need to go at a broken back country. Actually, the Russian president and uh, Prime Minister are actually at uh, odds with each other, so they haven't completely denounced it. Let's just go to the audience. Gentleman in the middle there with the black hair. Hello. Yeah. Many of the speakers point out how we as a country and nation have denounced, to ha have encouraged these dictators and propped them up. We have perhaps sold them weapons. We have perhaps intervened in their countries in the past. And yet in the same breath, they say that we should not intervene simply because it is perhaps too expensive or perhaps we have no role in this. Surely we should be given the chance. In fact, we have the obligation to at least make, to make right what we have made wrong. To try and keep the security first. But we're still, we're still propping up the dictators. Saudi Arabia is propped up by us, or it would fall down. Now, we've heard but people talking about right the in Arab Libya, League. Is what Richard, the is talking Richard, about. You have thrice mentioned the Arab League. The Arab League is a collection of dictatorships who are mostly involved in killing their own democracy protesters. And you want us to say it's a good idea because the Arab League is in favour of it. The Arab League... There's not a single democratic I mean, government in the entire Arab League. But look at and half of them are killing the George, road. Let's, let's, George, let's get a word in. Let's, let's, let's can. If you look at the uprisings, else. George, across North mm -hmm. Africa and the Middle East, uh, if the rest of the world uh, hadn't, if that coalition had not intervened in Libya and Gaddafi had been allowed to completely suppress and kill those rebels, what message would that have sent? to other dictators But that's the in message we are sending to all the other dictatorships. You can kill your people if you like. No, we're not, not sending. No. Yes, we are. What did we say against Saudi Arabia killing its own people? What did we say about Saudi Arabia invading Bahrain last Friday mm. in order to kill the people of Bahrain? Nothing right. at all. Let's get the audience. Let's get the audience. Let's get the audience. Right. Uh, Blue Blazer. Um, what is the difference between the situation in Libya uh, and the situation that was in China in the Tiananmen Square protest and so also the Guangzhou democratization movement in Korea in 1980. Uh, they both started off as a civilized movement which ended in a bloody massacre. Oh, let me add another one. In this country, in Northern Ireland, when British troops shot dead 14 innocent protesters, none of whom was carrying a weapon, and we then covered it up for 40 years, and then finally, almost half a century later, David Cameron apologised. Would we have supported, and I've got to answer would that. We have supported so you're, you're, I'm sorry, that foreign troops intervening in Northern Ireland to protect? You're talking about Bloody Bill. Sunday. Did, but, uh, I, uh, you were involved in Northern Ireland. You were involved in Northern Ireland, Bob Stewart. Six tours I did in Northern Ireland to protect the people. I lost soldiers in Northern Ireland. 
Yes, Bloody Sunday was a mistake. I entirely agree with it. A mistake? I sent, uh, look, it was a let crime. me speak. It was a crime. Of course it was. Let me speak, though. It took too long. I knew at the time I was on the streets that it was a crime. I accept that. I totally reject the uh, comparisons between Rwanda and Balkans. What happened in the Balkans were the presence of genocidal maniacs. Gaddafi is many things, but he's not a genocidal maniac. Not What's happening yet. in the Arab world are revolutions, not genocidal maniacs. <coughs> the people who took up arms have made the conscious choice to sacrifice their lives or put their lives at risk to overthrow but, dictators. But if, 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 when Gaddafi said he would go door to door, house to house, and show no mercy to the people of Benghazi, all right, not technically a genocide, but not that different to a genocide. Well, well, uh, <laughs> look, you keep saying that. As a matter of fact, the voice of America, that well-known Gaddafi radio station, <laughs> Uh, has published the text of what Gaddafi said. And it was not what you're saying it was. In any case, it was hot air. The Libyan regime is a ramshackle, disorganized shambles, as my two new friends, the experts from the Middle East, uh, will uh, be able to testify. But it's, Gaddafi, a, pretty, it's a pretty deadly G shambles G Gaddafi, if you happen to uh, be in Benghazi. Yes, indeed. But mm -hmm. the, the Gaddafi had no means to go house to house and kill a million people and neither in fact according to the voice of America did he say so but the young man's made the point this is an armed uprising an armed uprising by the way that miraculously got its hand on airplanes and, and tanks some revolutionaries I wonder where they got them from You're saying so, they rose up and they're contesting with Gaddafi for state power in Libya so, I'm with them I'm, I want Gaddafi out whatever happens but it's not the same thing as being on the hills above Sarajevo and raining down death and destruction and so on entirely innocent individuals. When you say it's hot air, George Galloway, you think Gaddafi is, perhaps Gaddafi, Gaddafi would have shown mercy. Hot air. He no. would have shown mercy. He doesn't have the, the means. rebels no, in Benghazi. He doesn't have the means to conquer Benghazi. He's got this tanks. war, uh, this war, by the way, in which we've seen surprisingly few pictures. I wonder why is actually being fought between very small groups of people on each side. Let's not paint this as if this was uh, the Battle of Kursk. This is a ramshackle, primitive society in which small groups of people are fighting each other for state power. Okay, we're moving on. George Galloway, thank you. Let's, uh...